Hey, it's KJ with Living Christian, and welcome to the Bible Reading and Coffee Drinking Podcast. If this is your first time here, what we do on this podcast is read a chapter of the Bible, drink a little bit of coffee, and talk a whole lot about Jesus along the way. Each episode dives into Scripture and discusses it in a somewhat modern and relatable way. I'll also be answering some questions from my social media followers. They'll submit a question if you'd like me to answer it. Oh, and we'll drink coffee along the way as well. Although our main focus is reading the Bible and drinking some coffee, we will also occasionally be doing some interviews, some random other messages along the way, so be sure to check back often. If you feel the urge to support the podcast, you can do so right here on the podcast page. If this podcast helps you grow in your faith, maybe consider sending it to a friend or uh, maybe dropping a rating or review. It certainly helps us get the word out. And also make sure you check out livingchristian.org for Bible verse lists, Christian blog, an apparel store with a bunch of Christian t-shirts, hoodies, hats, and more. It's awesome. All livingchristian.org. And if you're there, make sure you use the code podcast20. That's a special code for 20% off our entire store only for our podcast listeners. So podcast20, use that when you're on livingchristian.org. Now let's get to the episode. All right, so uh, we're going to dive into John 14 today. That's going to be our episode today. We're going to read it, as I mentioned, read it all the way through. I'll talk along the way in case this is your first time listening or watching this, and I'll answer some questions at the end. Uh, But let's dive into John 14. Uh, I love the Gospels. They're all about Jesus Christ. So Jesus is kind of describing why he is the, uh, the way, why he's the only way to heaven. So that's what we're talking about here today. Uh, so John 14, Jesus, the way to the Father. All right. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and also trust in me. This is Jesus' words, okay? There is, no, there is more than enough room in my Father's home. If, there were, uh, if this were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? With everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be here with me where I am and know that I know the way to where I'm going. Let's kind of dive in. This is a lot to unpack at the beginning of John 14, right? First of all, he's comparing himself to the Father right off the bat, right? He's telling the disciples right off the bat, don't let your hearts be terrible. Don't worry about what's to come, but trust in the Father, trust in God, but also trust in me. There's more than enough room in the Father's house, which I think is an interesting point that Jesus is making, like making sure that we know, right, and everybody knows at the time, that there's plenty of room in heaven, right? Uh, the Father's home is huge, and He's prepared a place for you as long as you receive it. So He talks about the fact that Jesus has uh, put a place for you with everything. When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am. So that's an interesting point as well that Jesus makes. And many people read that in terms of when everything is ready, I will come get you as like a rapture event. He's going to come snatch us into the air, and that's what he's referencing. And maybe he is. Maybe he is. But what if it's also when Jesus has your place in heaven prepared for you, he comes and gets you? Maybe that's when we transition. Maybe that's our time to pass away from this earth and join him. So there's two ways you can kind of read that. The general consensus is that the rapture, which we don't know necessarily know when that's going to be, but uh, there's a couple ways to read that. So let's go into verse 5. Now, we don't know, Lord, Thomas said. Of course, Thomas is questioning, because that's what he does. We have no idea where you are going. So how can we know the way? All right, so doubting Thomas questions Jesus. It's like, how, am I, how are we supposed to know the way to heaven? How are we supposed to know that you've prepared a place for us and where we're supposed to go? This is Jesus' response in, in, in verse 6. Jesus told them, I am the way, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. If you had already known me, you know you would know who the Father is. For now on, you do know him and have seen him. Alright, so he's making sure that everybody knows that the Father and the Son are one. We're part of the, the Trinity, right? We're gonna to get to the Holy Spirit in a minute. But he's describing two parts of the Trinity right there. I am with the Father. If you know him, you know me. If you know me, you know him. He is the only way to get to the Father is through Jesus. Verse 8, Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Once again, they're questioning. They can't just take Jesus' words for what he's saying. They're, They're not necessarily doubting him, but they're wanting more explanation. They're not understanding what he's saying. Verse 9, Jesus replied, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and yet you still don't know who I am? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So why are you asking me to show him to you? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? 
The words I speak are not my own, but my Father who lives in me does his work through me. Just believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe because the work you have seen me do. So you have to think about where we're at with the progression here so far, right? These people have watched Jesus perform miracles. <clears throat> They've watched him perform miracles. And he is so bold to say, hey, I am with the Father. The Father is in me and I am in him and I am one with God. And Philip and Thomas, for that matter, kind of question that. Like, what are you talking about? And Jesus replies, haven't you been with us the whole time? Haven't you seen me do these things, Philip? Don't you understand? Don't you believe in the miracles that I've already performed? How can you doubt me? How can you not understand at this point that I am the Messiah, that I am the Savior, that I am who I say I am? Interesting how <clears throat> nowadays we're so divided as a country, as a world. And we have everything we ever want to know in the palm of our hands here with this phone, right? You can find out anything you want. We can read the Bible. We can read Jesus' words. We can read devotionals. We can go to sermons. We can watch YouTube videos. There's a lot of stuff out there, a lot of proof, a lot of explanation of why Jesus is who he is. But yet, most of this world are just like Philip. Like, I hear you, Jesus, but I don't quite understand what you're saying. Are you saying you're the only way to heaven? Are you saying that you're God? So I, I think they're a reflection. The disciples are specifically Philip and Thomas, but all of them are a reflection to even our society today. Jesus and, and the Bible and God are everywhere in our culture. I may do a blog post. Maybe I'll do that today. I don't know. Maybe next week. <clears throat> but all of the common phrases that we use in day-to-day -day life that come from the Bible, you'd be astonished how many there are, right? But yet, with, with Jesus so saturating our culture in many ways, right? There's a church on every corner. The Bible is the most purchased book of all time. You can watch it on your phone. You can read it on your phone. There's videos everywhere, but yet we still question that Jesus is who he says he is. That's exactly what he's telling Philip is you've got to understand. Look at the proof around me. Listen to the words that I'm saying, okay? All right, let's go to verse 12. I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater works because I'm go going to be with the Father. He's kind of prophesying what's going to happen next. <clears throat> you can ask for anything in my name and I will do it so that the Son can bring glory to the Father. Yes, ask me for anything in my name and I will will do it. I love the first part where it talks about, I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater works, right? Jesus talked to thousands of people. He had 12 followers. He performed miracles, but he was limited to the geography of where, where he was located. They're walking around everywhere. That's one of the ways I think when he says, anyone who believes in me will do the same works I've done, and even greater works. What does greater mean? It means more. More abundant. There's a way he's referring to the fact that now we have people, such as myself for that matter, talking about Jesus and reading the Bible all over the place. We, we, we were able to, through the internet, expand the reach of the gospel farther than Jesus was at the time. Physically, not God, Jesus, but like the part that was man. <laughs> I mean, in reality, it's all about Jesus. And, and the fact that we're doing this is uh, only because of him. And, and he gives us the knowledge and he gives us the desire. He gives us the strength to fight this culture and dive into Christianity. So through him, we were able to accomplish a lot, which is interesting. All right, let's go into 15. Jesus promises the Holy Spirit. If you love me, obey my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because you live because he lives with you now and later will be in you. So now Jesus has described the Trinity 
on one page of the Bible. People that don't believe in the Trinity or don't understand the Trinity, it's right there. The Father, the Son, and now the Holy Spirit, who lives with them at the time, who will eventually live in them. What he's talking about there is once Jesus passes away, God and he doesn't pass away, once he resurrects and goes up into heaven, once he ascends and he is gone, he sends the Holy Spirit down to be inside of everyone. Right? So if you've accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have the Holy Spirit with you and in you all, all day long. So he describes the entire Trinity in like three paragraphs. So if you don't understand that, go back to John 14 and Jesus tells you exactly what is happening. All right, let's read 18. No, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. Soon the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Since I live, you will also live. When I am raised to life again, prophesies in the resurrection, you will know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. And because they love me, my Father will love them. And I will love them and reveal myself to each of them. He keeps referring to a couple of commandments. I love Matthew 22, uh, which is a different book. But my favorite verse is uh, one of them asks Jesus what is the greatest commandment. And his response is, the greatest commandment of all is love God uh, with all your heart, soul, and mind. And the second one, the second commandment, which is equally as important as the first, is love your neighbor as you love yourself. Think about if we obey those commandments that Jesus said in Matthew that John's referring to here. If we accept those two commandments and others, but let's talk about those two, and obey them, that we're the ones that love God. Because the first commandment, the greatest commandment that he's talking about, right? Love God with all your heart and soul and your mind. So if we obey those two commandments, we will love Jesus. We will love the Father, and they will love us. Pretty cool. All right, uh, verse 22, Judas, not Judas Iscariot, but the other one, disciple with the name, said to him, Lord, why are you going to reveal yourself only to us and not to the world at large? That's a good question. Verse 23, Jesus replied, All who love me will do what I say. My Father will love them, and we will come and make our home with each of you. Anyone who doesn't love me will not obey me, and remember, my words are not my own. What I'm telling you is from the Father who sent me. I'm telling you that these things now, while I'm still with you. But the, when the Father sends the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, as my representative, that is the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I have told you. So the Holy Spirit drives us, right? guides us, drives us to be on lives like this and to listen to podcasts, drives us to read God's Word. And with that nudge and with that encouragement that the Holy Spirit provides us, we are with him. All right, verse 27. I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. That's a, that is a great line from Jesus right there. The peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. Aren't we all trying to find peace? Aren't we all searching this world in our daily lives and in our culture and on, on Amazon and in music and everywhere else? Aren't we searching for peace? People meditate for it. People go through different things. They take vacations for it. They try to lay on the beach for it. But the reality is the world cannot give us the peace that Jesus can. He says it right there in verse 27. So don't be troubled or afraid. Remember what I told you. I am going away, but I will come back to you again. If you really loved me, you would be happy that I'm going to the Father, who is greater than I am. I have told you these things before they happen, so that when they happen, you will believe. So he's making sure that they understand what's going to happen, right? The fact that he's going to be crucified, died, resurrected, and will ascend to be with the Father. 
He's telling them this, even though they don't understand. He's telling them that's what's going to happen. Why is he telling them that's going to happen? Because he doesn't want it to be a surprise to them. He wants them to understand and, and continue to believe. That's a lesson for all of us. right? If, we, if you read the Bible, and you understand the Bible, and you believe the Bible, if you fast track into Revelation, or go to Daniel, or Thessalonians, or all these other books that reference the end times, we'll call it, True believers, those who love him, right? If you love me, you will be happy that I'm going to the Father. And they, I've told you these things before they happen, so that when they do happen, you will believe. When those things happen, when Jesus returns again, we will be happy, and we will believe in it. We won't fall for the devil's play. We won't fall for the beast. We won't fall for the mark. We won't fall for any of these things, because we already know what's going to happen. And we believe it, because you know, we're listening to Jesus' words right here, and we're reading our Bible. Okay? Last paragraph in John 14. I don't have much time, much more time to talk to you, because the ruler of this world approaches. We all know who that is. He has no power over me, but I will do what the Father requires of me, so that the world will know that I love the Father. Come, let's be going. So it's interesting, it's the way he ends John 14. The ruler of this world... The devil's coming for him. Does he want to go through what he knows he's about to go through? Probably not. But he says it right there. I do what the Father requires of me so that the world will know that I love the Father. Going back to the obey, he talks several times about obeying the commandments and obeying Jesus. And if you love him, you will obey him. <clears throat> he's, he's mirroring that with he's obeying the Father because he loves the Father. Make sense? He doesn't want to necessarily sacrifice and go through that pain. He knows it's coming. But he does it because the Father requires it. And why does he obey it? Because the second part. So that the world will know that I love the Father. He, when you obey, it shows others your love. If that makes sense. So we read our Bible. We obey Jesus. We live in a way that Jesus wants us to live. Why? So that others will see Jesus through us. So that others know that we love Jesus. Does that make sense? That's what Jesus is saying right there. He wants other people to see his example and how he loves God. And by doing that, he'll obey and go through trials and tribulations and, and, and show those people that they can't break him. So no matter what you're going through today, this world is not going to break you. Keep focused on your faith. Keep focused on Jesus. And people will see through your strength of getting through whatever life's challenges there are for you. If you stay focused on your faith, people will see that. And people will be wondering why you're that way. Well, tell me about... Why? How do you get this peace through these trials? Well, let me tell you about Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's the lesson on John 14. Pretty good one, huh? I love John 14. I love all the Gospels. I'm kind of re ready to read Luke, <clears throat> talking about the holidays coming up. Uh, I always read Luke. There's 24 chapters in Luke. I usually started on December 1st and read it all the way through uh, Christmas Eve. It's a great book for December. kind of tells you the entire life of Jesus Christ and prepares you for Christmas if you're... Uh, if you want to do that. So I'll probably do that. You know how, you, if you follow me on Instagram, uh, on the stories, if you go to the Instagram stories, I always, usually every morning I'll have a, a Bible reading plan that we'll do. We'll start Luke 1 on December 1st. So in about six weeks, uh, we'll start that. Uh, we're in First Thessalonians right now. So catch up if you want to. <laughs> Anyways, uh, ask, ask questions on the bottom. I'll, uh, I'll read a couple and then we'll get on out of here for our Friday. <clears throat> All right, let's see what questions we have. Which version of the Bible are you reading? That's an easy question. I can tackle that one in two seconds. New Living Translation is what I'm reading right now. For those watching this, uh, I've got lots of Bibles back here on my bookcase. Uh, I've, uh, I grew up Southern Baptist back in the day. <clears throat> I'm non-denominational now, but so I grew up on the old King James Version, but I've got NIVs, ESVs. Uh, I like the New Living Translation only because I'm used to it. Uh, and it's an every man's Bible, which you guys heard me talk about before. 
Uh, I love the Everyman's Bible because there's a lot of stuff in there in the notes and, and call outs for lessons for me as a husband and a father. So that's why I read it. So if you go to livingchristian.org, there's a little thing in the middle, <clears throat> excuse me, that talks about my, my favorite Amazon things. If you go to there and go to the Bible's uh, page on my Amazon page, there my Bible's right there. If you if you're a if you're looking for it out there. So if you're uh, if you're married, it's a great Christmas gift. I keep talking about Christmas today. I'm not sure why I'm in the Christmas mode. But Every Man's Bible NLT, you can get it on my Amazon page. I have it listed right there on the top. So check it out on if you go to livingchristian.org in the middle. There's my Amazon things. Go there and you'll find Bibles. Uh, but you can find that one there. So that's a great one. I love it. I've been doing it. I've been using this one for years. All right. How can I stop Satan from making me frightened about things such as Ukraine? All right, good question. Good question. Fear. How to handle fear? Does fear come from God? No. Do we fear God? Yes. But the way we fear God is a, is a different um, emotion than being afraid of circumstances of this world. When the Bible talks about fearing God, he's talking about respecting God, understanding that God's in charge, understanding that we're not, understanding that God can do anything, anytime to anyone. And we're going to respect that, we're going to honor that, and we're going to um, fear him in the sense of <clears throat> we love him so much that we want to be with him, right? And not be afraid of not being with him. But how do you deal with the worldly fear that Satan kind of petals around here, right? He loves to live in fear. He loves to cause us anguish and anxiety and fear in this world. Because what happens is, if we focus on that fear, if we focus on this terrible things happening in this world, we won't focus on Jesus. We won't focus on God. We won't read our Bibles. We'll get sucked away and pulled away and distracted by that fear. So how do we handle that? I mean, there's real situations. The war in Ukraine is a real situation. Famine is a real situation. Our daily struggles are real situations. Don't be afraid of those things. How I handle fear is the fact that I know my future, if that makes sense. I know that I'm here. My purpose in, on this earth is to obey those two commandments that I referenced earlier. Matthew 22. Love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. I know that's my purpose in life. And if I show love to everybody, they will understand and see where I'm coming from. I'm not afraid because once I fulfill my purpose and God's ready for me to be with him, it's even better than this place. <laughs> there is no war in Ukraine there. So I'm not afraid of temporary situations when I'm focused on my eternity. So the best way you can do it, I think, is to... And my, my account here is called Living Christian, okay? Live Christian seven days a week. Pray. Read your Bible. Dive in. Talk to fellow believers. Surround yourself with a Christian circle. Listen to good Christian music. Surround yourself, and every day of your life, be with God. Not just Sunday mornings, every day. What I found when I'm focused solely as much as I can on Jesus, I'm not as distracted as much as the, with all the junk going on in the world. Turn the news on and it's just terrible. I focus on Christ. Faith over fear, as the old saying goes. So that's how I would do it. Uh, don't get distracted by what's going on, the nonsense in this world. Some of it's terrible. The devil is working on you. He's trying to distract you. Don't let him. All right, uh, let's see uh, one more question here. How often do y'all go live? I'm thankful I found tonight's live link. Oh, thanks, Fraser. Uh, I go live on Monday and Friday. So uh, it's morning time here for me, so it's 8 a.m. in the morning on Mondays and Fridays. Um, do you recommend King James Version for new believers, for example, for people in India who aren't very good in English? Uh, probably not. I like the King James Version, but I, I'm, I'm not a, a King James loyalist um, in the sense of that that's the only one and everything, all, the other, all the other ones are not real. I think it's kind of hard to read, uh, especially if you're, if you're new to the English language, quite frankly, or even if you know English all your life like me. Uh, sometimes the King James can be kind of challenging to read. Um, so, I mean, if you want to read it, great. But in reality, there are a lot of good versions out there. Uh, ESV is a good, easy one to read. So 
Uh, if you like the ESV, English Standard Version, uh, that's an easy one to read, especially if you're new to English or new to the Bible. That's a, that's a good one to kind of help you understand what's going on. All right, one more question, and we'll get out of here. Uh, do, do, do. All right, do, did you know Exodus says to keep the Sabbath, not a Sabbath? <laughs> Ten Commandments are like Old Testament laws. Ten Commandments live forever. All right, Dylan. I, I, I agree with you the Ten Commandments live forever. I agree with you that the Ten Commandments uh, that uh, Moses uh, wrote about in Exodus is different than the other laws, the Levitical laws, the ceremonial laws that we're talking about in, in the rest of the uh, Torah. Um, I agree with that. Now, saying that, should we keep the Sabbath? Yes. What is the Sabbath? Is it a day of the week? Or is Jesus the Sabbath? We're supposed to find rest in that day of the week. God created the entire world in six days. On the seventh day, he rests. That is the Sabbath. Is that Saturday? Is it Sunday? Man, we can overthink that all day long. In reality, I find my rest in Jesus Christ. I don't find that if I <clears throat> work on Saturday or Sunday, depending on what your perspective is, um, that I'm, I'm, I'm breaking God's law. Jesus is my Sabbath. I find my peace in Him. I find my rest in Him. Okay? That's the reality. Those are God's laws that He gave down and wrote, and Moses collected. I understand that. Let's read them. Do we obey by those Ten Commandments in order to get to heaven? No. Do we obey by those Ten Commandments because we're following God and because He wants us to? Yes. There's a difference. We just talked about in John 14. Keep my commandments. And if you do keep my commandments, it'll show people that, that you love him. That's what Jesus is talking about right then. He didn't necessarily say that if you keep my commandments, you'll get to go to heaven. That's not what he said. He said, if you, I am the only way. Jesus' words were, I'm the only way to the Father, period. Through Jesus to heaven. And if you keep the commandments as he tells you to, it'll show others that you love him. That's John 14. That's what we just read. So, we keep the commandments. I don't not commit adultery because uh, I won't get in heaven if I do. I don't commit adulteries because I love Jesus so much. And when I do that, when I break those laws, I'm not spreading Jesus and the, and the gospel to the rest of the world. I need to be a good example. I want to do it because I love him. That's what he's talking about. We're saved. Thank you. We're saved by grace through faith, period. That's it. That's my, that's my perspective. <laughs> All right. Hope you guys have a great weekend. Uh, we're going to get out of here now. Uh, check out livingchristian.org if you haven't. If you need to catch up on any of these uh, videos or podcast episodes, go to livingchristian.org. Also, drop me a line, e email me if you have any ideas for uh, Christmas or holiday apparel. I'm working on Christmas apparel right now. I'd love to get those growing. Check out my book, uh, my new children's illustrated book, Bear Goes Home for Christmas. And until Monday, Keep Jesus in your heart and forever in your mind. Love you guys.